Welcome back to the Michael Lofton Show on a Sunday. Wow, um, pretty incredible message that has just been released from Father James Altman. Um, where do we start? Uh, let's maybe start with the title of the homily. The homily is called Father Altman on the Great Millstone Throw Bergoglio into the Deep Blue Sea. And it's not just the title. The video is about throwing Pope Francis into the deep blue sea yes killing pope francis i kid you not this is not clickbait that's actually something that just happened about four hours ago this message was released and i want to review it for the sake of those souls that are being misled and are confused by this very demonic message and many are already confused uh looking through the comment section as i will do with y'all in a in a little bit at the end of the review um, everybody is cheering him on. They're quite literally cheering on Father Altman, who is advocating for, to put it bluntly, the murder of Pope Francis. And they're saying, this is faithful. This is faithful to Jesus. God bless you. Uh, you know, and, and everybody is cheering this on. And I think that those people are deceived and need some guidance. Uh, but they're certainly not receiving it from Altman. And I want to demonstrate that as I review his video. Okay, well, let me go ahead and share my screen and let's dive into the very beginning of the message where he just comes right out of the gate and advocates for killing Pope Francis uh, at the very beginning. Let's just dive in. The best thing we could do would be to tie the great millstone around Jorge Bergoglio's neck and throw him into the deep blue Mediterranean Sea. So before... Yeah, you, you heard that correctly. Right before he opens in prayer, and by the way, he says this multiple times during the homily. It's not like a one-off thing. I just want to, again, show that to you at the very beginning. Right before opening us in prayer, uh, he quite literally ad advocates for killing Pope Francis. Let, let's, let's listen to it once again. Other family, today... We are going to consider Jesus' teaching on the great millstone as it applies to Jorge Bergoglio. I love the holy music playing in the background as we advocate for murder. And how the best... People get mad at me because they say I'm just angry all the time. But that, the, Huh. I wonder why. The best thing we could do would be to tie the great millstone around Jorge Bergoglio's neck and throw him into the deep blue Mediterranean Sea. So before we address this great millstone applied to Jorge Bergoglio, let us begin with a gospel passage quoting St. John the Baptist, who was imprisoned and martyred 2,000 years ago just for standing up for traditional marriage. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So, yeah, you, you heard that correctly. Uh, before we begin in prayer, let me just propose that we need to kill Pope Francis. And now let's pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as the holy Gregorian chant music plays in the background. Um, wow. Okay. So let's skip to the two-minute mark, see what he has to say there. Vipers. No, of course not. How did John the Baptist, the greatest man born of women, when he sees a brood of vipers, how did he say it? Let's use the, the brains God gave us. You brood of vipers. He didn't even say it that pleasantly. You brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence. Yeah, so Altman tries to use this as a proof text to advocate for what he does, which is constantly call Pope Francis and the bishops brood, a brood of vipers. And he tries to say, look, there's precedent for it right here in John the Baptist, except he completely misses that he's not John the Baptist. That's number one. And then number two, he also completely misses Acts 23, um, where he would actually have to be greater than St. Paul in order to do what John the Baptist is doing. And we all know that Altman is not greater than St. Paul. Um, so Acts chapter 23, Paul looked straight at the Sanhedrin and said, My brothers, I have fulfilled my duty to God and all good conscience to this day. At this, the high priest Ananias ordered 
those standing near Paul to strike him on the mouth. So the high priest ordered to strike Paul on the mouth. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. Now, Jesus was the one who called people whitewashed tombs. He was the one who called the Pharisees a whitewashed tomb in the very same way that John the Baptist called the Pharisees a brood of vipers. Now, Paul calls the high priest a whitewashed wall. So you would think, hey, well, there it is. We get to call leaders that we don't disagree with. We get to call them names, right? Actually, watch what happens next. You sit there to judge me according to the law, yet you yourself violate the law by commanding that I be struck. Those who were near Paul said, how dare you insult God's high priest? And does now Paul say, well, look, I can do this. Jesus did it. John the Baptist did it. No, he says, Paul, Paul replied, brothers, I did not realize he was the high priest, for it is written, do not speak evil about the ruler of your people. That is a quote from the Old Testament. Then Paul knowing that some of them were Sadducees and other Pharisees called out in the Sanhedrin and so on. And he goes on. So he did not realize that he had rebuked the great high priest. And when he realized it, he immediately retract and apologized because he knew that he could not speak against the high priest that way. Now, in the new covenant, the Pope acts in that position. Now, obviously, Jesus is the great high priest, and every priest is a priest according to his order. And the high priest, if you will, obviously, again, is Jesus, but that is in an invisible form. Jesus right now is not physically present here. He is sacramentally present, but he is not physically reigning here. He's, he is invisible. Rather, he reigns through his successor his vicar, uh, the successor of St. Peter. Rather, I shouldn't say the su successor, the successor of St. Peter, not the successor of Jesus. His vicar, uh, who is the visible expression of Jesus, the great high priest. And we know this because, again, we're Catholics. This is just Catholicism 101. The Pope functions in that capacity as the great high priest in its visible form. And so if this applied to the old covenant high priest, that we cannot speak evil about the ruler, then how much more does it apply then to the Pope to not speak of him in this way? And so very clearly, um, Altman is very misguided about sacred scripture and seems to be missing a really important part there. Uh, let's go to 330 and see what he has to say next. This seem to have been very positive, there has been pushback after I stated the self-evident truth. Jorge Bergoglio is not Catholic, therefore he is not the Pope. There's been... Yeah, right. So, I mean, this is, again, now the third video, to my knowledge, where he very explicitly says Pope Francis is not the Pope. Again, he is a set of a contest, which simply means a person who believes the Sea of St. Peter is currently empty pushback over the conclusion stated. So let us begin today's meditation on how Bergoglio should get Jesus's great millstone treatment, which is gospel truth. There you go. So again, it's not just the title of the video. It wasn't just something that he said before prayer. It's something he repeats over and over. Pope Francis needs to be thrown into the great deep blue sea, as he puts it. He needs to be given that treatment that Jesus speaks about. He needs to be executed, according to Altman. From the mouth of our Lord himself. So with the words of St. John the Baptist still ringing in our heads, quote, when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he warned them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath, Produce good fruit is evidence of your repentance. With those words... Is this good fruit, by the way? Uh, advocating for murdering Pope Francis. Just asking an uh, honest question here. Is that good fruit? Bringing in our heads, let us begin our meditation by hearing again... A meditation? <laughs> exactly what I said in that video 10 days ago. Quote, memo to Bergoglio and every American cardinal. I accepted Cardinal Burke. When you die... 
he always accepts Cardinal Burke here. It's interesting. Cardinal Burke hasn't come out and said anything. Uh, Cardinal Burke, uh, Page and Cardinal Burke. Hey, uh, you on board with this stuff? Are you going to say something? Where you at, Cardinal Burke? Might want to come out and say something, given that literally every single video, Altman is praising you and condemning everyone else. And so he seems to think that you're on Team Altman. Are you on Team Altman, Cardinal Burke? And it won't be long. They are all old. And you meet Jesus Christ, the Lord. Beside him will be standing St. Tarsisius, who you know defended the Holy Eucharist unto death, a 13-year-old boy, beaten to death defending the Holy Eucharist from sacrilege. So beside him will be standing St. Tarsisius, St. Charles Luanga. But oh, I just did this, just today. Well, it was about 2 a.m. I didn't realize, this is an aside, I didn't realize that there was an actual picture of St. Charles Luanga and his companions. I thought it was so long ago that there was no such thing as a picture. Let me tell you something. When I gazed upon that saint and all those young men who were brutally martyred because they refused to acquiesce to the king's homosexual advances, I was stunned. And I'm pretty sure they also weren't brutally martyred to defend people who were advocating for the murder of the current pope. When you look at this new whole uh, synod on sodomy, and you put that next to the picture of St. Charles Luanga as his companions. He calls it the synod of sodomy. I have numerous videos about the synod, the good, the bad, and the ugly about it. And I also have a, a video about Pope Francis, the good and the bad about him. But what we do know about Pope Francis is he says homosexuality is his end. And he also says in his magisterium that uh, gay unions um, cannot be blessed. So same sex unions cannot be blessed. The church cannot bless in is, in fact, what Pope Francis says in his magisterium. So um, Allman seems to have missed the memo that Pope Francis is not on board with that. Of course, you won't hear him address that. Do you see the truth when I say beside Jesus will be standing St. Tarsisius, St. Charles Luanga and his companions, and St. Robert Bellarmine, and they will block the entrance and watch you, Jorge Bergoglio, fall to your eternal damnation into the unquenchable fires of hell. That's how Jesus described it. Not making that up. Not trying to... Uh, I wonder if that uh, warning about, you know, the eternal fires of hell would apply to people who are advocating for uh, murdering the successor of St. Peter. I, I wonder. I, I don't know. Uh, what's a good word for it? I don't know. Uh, over explicit. Not trying to be over dramatic there. Those are, those are the words of Jesus. Unquenchable fires of hell. To which, back to the quote from that video 10 days ago, to which I only can say out of love and concern for the eternal souls you, Jorge Bergoglio, are leading astray cannot happen soon enough. End of quote. Uh huh. So his burning in hell can't happen soon enough, and that is coming from a place of love. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I'm pretty sure that's called gaslighting. Yeah. I uh, don't think that that's coming from a place of love. I think we can say that confidently, uh, even without reading hearts. Um, okay, let's skip to the eight-minute mark. And hate the morally ugly, end of quote, from the venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. So to all those who complain that... He, he quotes Sheen multiple times. You, you, you think Sheen would be on board with this? You think the Sheen machine would be on board? I don't know. All those uh, Sheen fans out there, I'd love to hear from you. You think Sheen's okay with uh, murdering Pope Francis? I sound angry. Amen, amen, I say to you. The truth is, I am not too angry. The truth is, I am not angry enough. All oh, right, yeah. No gaslighting here. I'm not angry. The truth is, I'm not angry enough. I should be even more angry than this, right? Okay, yeah. And if you are not righteously angry beyond measure, you are the problem. Uh huh. Yeah. So I don't know anybody who's saying that we shouldn't be righteously angry at sin in the world and sin in the church. Um, 
I literally don't know one person who says that. I'm pretty sure everybody is on board that we need to be righteously angry at sin. The problem is whenever we start to map that anger onto the sinner. Jesus said, pray for your enemies, love your enemies, not hate them. But it seems that Altman is missing that very basic and fundamental adage. Hate the sin, but love the sinner. We're all on board. We need to hate the sin. We're all on board. We need to hate corruption in the church. We're all on board there. Nobody's denying that. <clears throat> and nobody's denying righteous anger. The point is, this is not righteous anger. And it's also misguided. And it's pointed and directed at individuals. And that's why in the last video, it became very disturbing when Altman literally was smiling about talking about Pope Francis burning in hell. That should pain him to think about somebody burning in hell. That should be something he doesn't want. In fact, though, he says it can't happen soon enough. He said it in the last message. He says it now. What's going on here? Uh, let's go to the 9 minute 40 second mark. Skip ahead a little bit. For eternal souls. Dear family, for those complainers out there, I am not the problem. You are. And mm. you will be held accountable for your failure to love. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, again, <laughs> no gaslighting there. Those of y'all who, and I know y'all were in the minority since everybody is clapping and cheering for them. But those of y'all few faithful, the few faithful remnant of Israel that we still have who was, you know, who were shocked to watch. Um, him say Bergoglio is not the Pope. And those of y'all who said this isn't right. And, you know, your your anger and hatred has gone overboard. Those of y'all who are not comfortable with what Altman does. He's not the problem, according to Altman. You're the problem. You're the issue. No gaslighting there whatsoever. <laughs> On your eternal souls. Dear family, for those complainers out there. I am not the problem. You are, and you will be held accountable for your failure to love Almighty God enough to get righteously angry when Bergoglio... Loving God also includes obeying his commands, and he tells us not to hate our enemy, but to love our enemy. But this is not a message of loving your enemy. This is a message of hating your enemy and wishing that he would burn in hell. Mm. Yeah. This isn't working. This is gaslighting. Will and his boys continue their assault in the godless and the damned synod on sin and sodomy. Right. So again, I challenge anybody who believes what Altman is saying here, that somehow the Pope is at war with the Catholic Church. I challenge you, do your homework, go and read Vatican One's document, Pastor Eternus, chapter four, paragraph six and seven. Read that document. And then say, do I believe this about Pope Francis? And if your answer is no, well, there you go. You just know you don't hold the Catholic ecclesiology or it's the case that you don't actually believe Francis is the Pope, which means you're a set of a contest. And you just need to be open and front, upfront about your position that you're a set of a contest. And if you're a set of a contest, you have other issues and I have plenty of videos addressing that. You're welcome to watch them here. Uh, but at least be honest with yourself and say, yeah, well, I, you know, I, I just don't believe that there is right now anyone sitting on the chair of St. Peter. Be honest with it, um, with yourself and with others. Uh, but if you do believe that Pope Francis is the Pope, you can't believe that he is at war with Catholic tradition and as is at war with the faithful. There's no way you could believe that and believe what Pastor Eternus, chapter four, paragraph six and seven says. Those are mutually exclusive. So I challenge you to re rethink your ecclesiology because most likely it's Protestant and not Catholic. Uh, let's skip ahead to the 1204 minute mark. Words of Jesus, St. John the Baptist, the prophet Ezekiel, and the venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, fresh in our minds. Let us consider the truth I spoke 10 days ago when I said to Jorge Bergoglio and every American cardinal, except Cardinal Burke, you will fall to your eternal damnation into the unquenchable fires of hell, to which I only can say, out of love and concern for the eternal souls you are leading astray, cannot happen soon enough.
All right, so it can't happen soon enough that all of you are going to burn in hell. And I say that out of love. Right. You know, again, I'm not buying it. I don't believe that this is coming from a place of love. I'm sorry. I think that this is gaslighting. That is not coming from a place of love. Love would say, I'm, I, I, I warn you away from hellfire, but would never say, oh, you can't burn in hell soon enough. That's not love. That's hatred consuming you. This is Satan taking over the heart of Father Altman in front of our very eyes. It's demonic. I submit to you, he needs to see an exorcist and or a mental health physician. For those of y'all who might know Father Altman, if you're near to him, ch <clears throat> check in with him. Try to get him some help. Get him some help from a mental health physician and or exorcist. Both. Because Satan has taken over his heart very tragically here. And it's very evident and manifest for all of us to see. Let's uh, let's now skip to the 15 minutes. Uh, well, actually, I think we have a few more seconds of this clip left. Dear family, when eternal souls are on the line, when they are endangered by the vipers in miters, the brood of vipers in miters, niceties go out the window okay so i wonder would it be fair for a person to say that father altman should also have a millstone tied around his neck and thrown into the great sea and that he should also you know can't burn an l soon enough and you know would it be fair for a person to come along and say all of those things about him and they just say well look niceties go out the window and what you're doing is demonic therefore you know i think that this should happen to you and you can't burn an l soon enough and would it be fair if the tables were turned and people treated him that way, the way that he's treating others? Um, No, and I'm pretty sure he wouldn't stand for it if the tables were turned and it happened to him. All of a sudden, then you would start to hear about distinctions that he, of course, doesn't apply to Pope Francis and the bishops and cardinals. Let's skip to the 15-minute, 30-second mark. Demonstrate. As his same course of conduct demonstrates, he was not Catholic at the moment he entered the conclave. You heard that right. Uh, contrary to what he said earlier uh, in a previous message, where he over and over said that Pope Francis lost the papacy and he was indicating that he lost it after being Pope. Now he's changing his position and is actually saying from the moment of the conclave. He wasn't Catholic and therefore has never been Pope. So Pope Francis has never been Pope now, uh, at least as of today, he's saying that. I, I don't know what he'll say tomorrow. It's not what he said a few months ago. It's probably not what he'll say in a few months. I, I, in a few months from now, he might be saying John Paul II isn't Pope either. Uh, he, he might say Benedict was a Pope. John Paul II was a Pope. Vatican II wasn't a uh, valid ecumenical council. I mean, just, just give it a few more months. He'll be saying all kinds of things. But at least as of today... Uh, he's saying that Pope Francis wasn't Pope even from moment one because at the time of his election, he wasn't Catholic and the non-Catholic can't be elected. Obviously, he knows nothing, nothing here about canon law and all of the things that he is assuming to even make those claims. Putting all that to the side, he's at least putting his cards on the table and telling you what he believes. All of the acts of Pope Francis, null and void, they're not actually pontifical acts none of it is authoritative he was never pope to begin with um okay let's uh skip to the 20 minutes 15 second mark skipping ahead just a little bit here we understand the significance from the very mouth of jesus so now watch when i said to jorge bergoglio chief wolf in sheep's clothing that for the sake of eternal souls, that he is leading astray, that his fall could not happen soon enough. What I said was exactly the same thing as Jesus our Lord taught in the gospel. There you go. So look, hey, if you don't agree with what he's saying about murdering Pope Francis, then you're disagreeing with Jesus himself. I mean, he's equating his application and interpretation of a passage with what Jesus actually was saying, 
right? So he, he doesn't seem to be aware that he's kind of falling into the Protestant error here of assuming his interpretation of Scripture is identical with the actual meaning of Scripture. There, he's not guarding against that. He's not making that distinction. It's just very clear. Hey, look, if you don't agree with me about murdering Pope Francis, you're the problem, not me. And you're disagreeing with Jesus, not me. All right. Again, this is gaslighting. And you know what? I'm not buying it, but a ton of people are, as we're going to see here in just a moment, very sadly. I can't expect many Catholics to know and understand that because they haven't been taught that. For oh, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, not at all condescending here. Um, over and over in this homily, he talks about how the laity are just uh, very, very ignorant and don't know Catholic theology. But he knows Catholic theology and he knows church history, he assures us, even though actually he doesn't. Um, it's actually pretty comical that he thinks he does. For anybody who does know church church history, it, uh, he, he becomes incredibly uh, conspicuous as somebody who doesn't. But he assures us he knows theology, he knows church history, but many of the faithful don't. And that's why they don't agree with him whenever he says things like Francis isn't the pope or he should be thrown into the Mediterranean. It's because you don't know theology. That's what it is. You don't know the words of Jesus. For well over 100 years now according to St. Cardinal John Henry Newman. St. Cardinal John Henry Newman. Hmm. You think John Henry Newman would be on board with this? You, you, you think he would uh, agree with Altman if you were alive today? So for all those people out there who complained, or I call, I call them whiners, uh, who say, I want Bergoglio to go to hell, just actually read the gospel. And by the way, <laughs> I, I need to point out the glaring inconsistency here, right? I mean, he assures us Pope Francis has never been Pope. Now, what year was Cardinal Newman made a saint? I just double checked. 2019. Guess who was Pope in 2019? Pope Francis. So Pope Francis is the one who canonized him. He's a saint because of that canonization. But Pope Francis and his acts are all null and void because he's never been the Pope to begin with. But he's still saying that he's Saint Cardinal John Henry Newman. He doesn't see the internal inconsistency here. Uh, excuse me, y'all, man. Maybe you didn't get the memo, but uh, yeah, you can't call him a saint because you don't believe that Pope Francis can canonize somebody because... You don't believe he's the Pope. So what are you doing? You haven't thought this one through? Really? Yeah, you haven't connected the dots here? Okay. According to St. Cardinal John Henry Newman. So for all those people out there who complained, or I call, I call them whiners. Yeah, so look, if you don't agree with his video, you're a whiner. You don't know scripture. You're a whiner. That's what it is. Uh, who say, I want Bergoglio to go to hell. Just actually read the Gospels. Yeah, again, your problem, if you don't agree with Altman, it's just because you don't read the Gospels. God, such a dummy. Just go and read the Gospels. What's wrong with you? This isn't condescending at all. Okay, well... So evidently, I've never read the Gospels before uh, because I don't agree with Altman. Okay. Re repeatedly and grasp the simple truth that what I said is exactly what Jesus taught. Yeah, there you go. If you, if you don't agree, you're disagreeing with Jesus himself. There it is. But if you, but if you don't know your sacred scriptures, you don't know and understand what Jesus taught and mm -hmm. and you're just complaining without foundation right you're just complaining without foundation if you don't agree with Altman that's what it is you don't know Jesus you don't know the Gospels uh, because it's abundantly clear that Altman has the correct interpretation of Scripture that can't be challenged Altman is above reproach his interpretation can't be challenged it has to be assumed as gospel truth and so if you don't agree with this you just you disagree with Jesus. That's your problem.
You need to get on board with Jesus. Okay, so let's get to the 24 minute and 50 second mark. And for a lot more good shepherds besides just the great Bishop Strickland of Tyler, Texas, who's under attack from none other than. Oh, Bishop Strickland, you got another shout out for Altman. You on board with this, Bishop Strickland? Where are you at? I haven't heard from you about Altman. You what? Where, where are you weighing in on this one? Paging Bishop Strickland, where are you? Cardinal uh, Cardinal Burke, paging you as well. Y'all keep getting shout outs from this guy. You on board with this? Are you going to come out, uh, Bishop Strickland, and denounce this and say, this is hateful, this is demonic, this is evil? And are you going to say, Altman, never mention me again. I'm not on your side. Or are you just going to continue to let these shout outs go on? Are you on Team Altman? It's important to come out and say something. Again, I, I gave the analogy last time. If there was a Satanist out there who in every video, you know, condemns all Catholics except Michael Lofton. Michael Lofton's the best thing ever, but all you other Catholics are horrible. And he's a dyed in the wool Satanist. You better believe within the first minute of him saying that for the first time, I would get here right on YouTube and say, yeah, no, don't ever say my name again. I, we're, I'm not on board with this. Uh, we're not on the same team here. Go to confession. You know That, that would be what I'm saying. I, I would never accept that endorsement. I would immediately repudiate that. But where are these guys at? They're MIA. But let's hear this again. And for a lot more good shepherds besides just the great Bishop Strickland of Tyler, Texas, who's under attack from none other than Jorge Bergoglio, the one bishop in this country who speaks up and speaks the truth and defends the Catholic faith, is, un is under attack. The one bishop who speaks the Catholic faith. Well, um, again, according to what our forefathers at the Eighth Ecumenical Council said, what Bishop Strickland has done um, was actually something that Photius was anathematized for and that they said sends people to hell. And that is judging the first C, which Bishop Strickland has formally done in signing a document last year publicly accusing the papacy of teaching heresy. Again, he has judged the first C in a very way that was condemned by the Eighth Ecumenical Council. I'll put a link in the show notes for more on that. You're welcome to watch it. Uh, but we need to keep that in perspective when we speak about Bishop Strickland. Attacked directly by Jorge Bergoglio, which only goes to prove that every single word I have said about Jorge Bergoglio is true. Thank you, Jorge Bergoglio, for giving me that one. L listen to the strings building up in the background. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of like watching one of those old videos of Hitler ranting and pontificating over and over and over and it has emotional music in the background that, that's kind of the impression that i'm getting at this point which only goes to prove that every single word i have said about jorge bergoglio is true thank you jorge bergoglio for giving me that one on a silver platter it is long past time for a lot more good shepherds besides the great bishop strickland to stand up and speak the truth and as archbishop fulton sheen said it's up to you Dear family, to demand it. Oh, may God give us the strength, the wisdom, and the grace to make such a demand. Wow. Wow. Is that moving your heart? Is that tugging on your heartstrings? All that. The warm and fuzzy music in the background there. Oh, yeah. It's so emotionally manipulative. Well, actually, let's see how successful he was at brainwashing and at convincing people. Uh, sadly, he was actually very successful. Oh, let's look through the comment section. Wonderful, Father Altman. I agree with you 100%. Thank you, Father Altman, for saying what many believe but are afraid to say. Thank you, Father Altman. Praying for your health and safety, Father Altman. Thank you. God bless you, Father Altman. We stand with you, Father Altman. God bless you. Don't stand down. I love you, Father Altman. As we say in Scotland, ye dinny mince your words. 
always onwards and upwards, Father Allman. God bless you, protect you. Amen. Brilliant as always, dear Father Allman. Thank you, dearest Father Allman. Thank you, Father Allman, for speaking the truth. Father Allman is one of the few true Catholic priests that exists. You're a voice in the wilderness of the fallen world. God bless you. God bless you, Father Allman. Thank you, Father Allman. I stand with Father Allman and St. Michael. God bless you, Father Allman. I thank you, Father Allman. I stand with Father Allman. Dear Father Allman, repeat your glorious sermon. Father Allman, thank you for speaking the truth. Pray for the conversion of the Pope and the cardinals and bishops. Pray, pray, pray. Praying for you, Father Allman. We love you, Father Allman. Uh, let's see. Keep you dear in my heart, Father Allman. I stand with you, dear Father Allman. Amen. Thanks, Father Allman. Thank you, Father Allman. Amen. Thanks, Father Allman. God bless you. Powerful. God bless you, Father Allman. Thank you. And so on. We can continue to do this for hours and continue to scroll through these comments for hours. And it's literally everybody praising him and cheering him on for a sermon that advocates for killing Pope Francis. That's where we're at. I have been sounding the alarm for several years now saying we need to pay attention. Red flags. This isn't good. Pay attention. Listen to what these guys are saying. This is going too far. And yet, many are silent. Sadly, many of the personalities out there speak on church politics. They're silent on this. They're unfortunately not saying anything about, you know, Altman and what he's been doing here. They're silent. Um... So what happens is we've allowed this situation to fester. We've allowed many people to deceive the minds and hearts of individuals for years now to indoctrinate them with all kinds of anti-Catholic propaganda um, and to turn their hearts against the Catholic Church and its shepherds. Whatever their failings are, this isn't the right path. But people have received years of indoctrination that has led them to this point, that people cheer this on, and they don't see this as wrong. That's unfortunate. I've been down this road. I've lived through it already. I once was one of these people who thought this very way. And then coming out of that, I realized how far astray I had gone. And how deceived the devil had me. And it took years to undo the indoctrination and all of the propaganda that I had been given that led me to that point. Likewise, it's going to take people who are convinced of this and are cheering him on. It's going to take years to undo this stuff. Probably more years than it took to indoctrinate them with this stuff, which has been for quite a long time. But we have a share in that. Part of this is because of us, because we have not been speaking out against this stuff and addressing it. Whenever we see the red flags and the warning signs, we just kind of let it slide. Again, people are letting this slide. They're not commenting. They're not saying anything about what Altman's doing. A lot of people are giving it a pass and just going on business as usual. Well, business as usual, look where that has gotten us. We've allowed this situation to fester to the point that people are calling to kill Pope Francis and people are cheering that on and they don't see anything wrong with that. That's how bad this is. And I think the point of um, or the policy of just allowing thing to, things to fester and being silent obviously isn't working. Also, at some point, there is a responsibility among the bishops. Paging lacrosse, where are you at? What's going on? I imagine they're in the process of laicizing him, but it would be important. And I, in fact, I think it's imperative to come out and maybe give a statement. Now, I know they indirectly um, revealed not long ago that Altman has already been told not to present himself as a priest, but he's been violating that. As you can see, he still wears the clerical collar, presents himself as a priest. Uh, his diocese says you can't do that. Um. But it would be helpful for Lacrosse to come out and actually tell us where 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 are we at at this point. So you literally have a set of contests who is advocating for killing Pope Francis, and we're not releasing a statement. Paging Diocese of Lacrosse, 
it's time to come out and issue a statement. I understand the strategy of, well, let's just wait until we get word back from Rome. Yeah, you know what? You might want to come out and say something in between before that happens, because a lot of people are being misled in the meantime. So I don't know. Is it really wise and prudent to wait, I don't know, a few more months, perhaps a year before you get a response back from Rome? What happens to all the people who have been misled in the meantime? You might want to come out and actually say something. So at some point, you do have to say, well, you know, the bishops need to start standing up and speaking up against this. And those bishops that were named in this video, Altman, Burke, where are you? You keep getting shout outs from this guy in the worst possible context. You should probably come out and say something. I don't know. Just a few thoughts from me. So I think there's failure on part of everyone all around here. All of us. We've all failed miserably because we've all allowed this situation to fester at this point. Those of us who speak on YouTube, those of us who are in apologetics, and those who are leaders in the church, priests and bishops, we've been silent about this wild stuff that's going on in radical traditionalism. We've been silent about it long enough, and we've allowed it to fester and come to this point. Maybe we need to rethink our strategy. Well, I have a whole playlist for y'all. If you are confused, you don't know what to do, you find yourself agreeing with a lot of what Altman says, but you feel like you need to pump the brakes on this, this is not an issue that we can resolve in one stream. There's just too much ground to cover. Fortunately, I have a whole playlist called Recovering from Radical Traditionalism dedicated to hours and, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of trying to undo all of this propaganda. So I encourage you to check that out. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. If you believe that this video has been helpful and what I'm doing here at Reason and Theology is helpful in combating some of this stuff, I ask that you support me, patreon.com forward slash Reason and Theology. I've mentioned it before, but a lot of Catholics have canceled me because I've spoken against this stuff. A lot have canceled me. A lot have stopped supporting me financially, unsubscribed, all of that. I do this as a way to provide for my family. If you feel this is the best way for me to provide for my family, I need to hear from you. So please consider supporting me on Patreon. You'll get access to extra content and you'll be able to keep the lights on so that I can continue to do this. Or if you want to support me directly through uh, either PayPal or GoFundMe, I'll put a link to both of those in the show notes if you would rather support me there. But I definitely need your help to be able to continue to do this. Otherwise, I'm just simply going to provide for my family in another way and just do something else with my time. But if you feel that this is a good use of my time, you feel that this is productive, it's helping people, it's reaching people, I need to hear from you and I need that support. So again, patreon.com forward slash reason and theology or the GoFundMe and PayPal link there in the show notes. And also again, check out that recovering from radical traditionalism playlist. It's free. It's nothing but free content. And it is hundreds of hours of content of undoing years of propaganda that you've most likely received by listening to this stuff. And so it's going to take a long time to undo, but I would suggest that we start there. All right, let's uh, pray for all men and all of those people who are deceived by this message of Satan. All right, we'll see you later. God bless. Are you confused about how Catholic teaching authority works with encyclicals, papal bulls, councils, and many other things? It's easy to get confused on what is authoritative and what is not. Fortunately, at MaximusInstitute.com, I have prepared a course explaining the magisterium from A to Z. Visit the website and check out the course, Understanding the Magisterium, for more information. Hey, everybody, just wanted to tell you about my new free ebook, Church Chaos, Biblical Insights for Confused Catholics. If you are a confused Catholic and you're thinking about leaving the Catholic Church or you're thinking about converting to the church, but you see that there's a crisis in the church and you're just unsure, this is the book for you. Again, it is free. Just simply go to reasonandtheology.com. You'll see a pop-up that comes up on your screen. Just simply click on it and you'll put in your email and it will provide you the free PDF ebook right then and there. Please check it out if you're confused about the situation in the Catholic Church today. Reasonandtheology.com. 
Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. See you next time. God bless. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, office, or any kind of property anywhere in the world, you're going to want to call Real Estate for Life, and they're going to connect you with a Catholic agent. Now, that agent will donate a portion of their commission upon sale, and Real Estate for Life will donate 75% of that gift to a pro-life organization at no cost to you. Call Real Estate for Life at 1-877-LIFE-US1 or text them 248-431-1440. If you care about the pro-life cause, call them now.